At Friday 9th of December 2011, EU Commissioner for International Cooperation, Humanitarian Aid and Crisis Response, Mrs. Kristalina Georgieva, visited the Danish Emergency Management Agency, also called DEMA. The visit took place at one of DEMA's training facilities in the outskirts of Copenhagen. Here she was presented for four different modules, which can be used for international help. The host of the visit is Director General Henning Thiesen. Nikolaj Raue Christensen from the Danish Emergency Management Agency showed and explained what the different modules are made for and how they can be used. One of the things she saw was field clinics or hospitals and water purification. And this was actually in action in Pakistan in 2010. And more than 154,000 people were treated at the clinics. The TAST module was next on the list for the commissioner. TAST means Technical Assistance Support Team. A TAST team is typically two persons bringing and operating IT and telecoms equipment. Supplementary equipment can be added to the TAST team. Like in Japan, where there was a need for radiological equipment and experts. Equipment for national use can also be deployed internationally. One recent example is the deployment of high-capacity pumps to Poland in 2010. Another option is deployment of radiological measuring equipment in a mobile unit and accompanied by national experts. The last thing was DEMA's user team. The Danish user module was officially certified by the United Nations in 2010. The deployment time is 12 hours. Utilizing four rescue groups, the team can work around the clock in 12-hour shifts and potentially in two physical separated sites. The module was on standby for Japan in 2010, proving again that the module is ready in less than 12 hours. The module includes search and rescue capacitors, as well as structural engineers, doctors, nurses, search units, etc. After the presentation, Commissioner Kristalina Georgieva gave a speech, and here is what she said. Um, I, I, first, I want to thank uh, Mr. Thiessen for the invitation to come, and uh, thank all of you for the chance to meet you again. Uh, it has been just slightly over a year when I first uh, had the chance to come here in the Danish Emergency Management Agency and I'm now convinced that this should be a tradition. Once a year, come and see what you do. Learn from the new uh, equipment and techniques and experiences you have uh, uh, accumulated. And actually, it is a very good point to say uh, that uh, I'm uh, very pleased and grateful that you have chosen for the Danish presidency to take the theme of lessons learned because this is what makes us more capable of saving lives, deploying faster, and actually bringing help to people in their most desperate uh, moment of need swiftly. Um, I have seen uh, Danish deployment now uh, a number of times. Uh, the first time I was with a Danish team was in Chile with the TAS team, and uh, at that time, I just could not believe that five people on their backs in a plane can bring the uh, equipment and tents and arrangements and logistics uh, uh, all the way down to uh, cooking, showers, uh, and then put it in, in a place uh, that would serve not only the EU but also serves the UN and be entirely independent of the local community, for which the local community was very, very grateful. But since then, uh, the, the other time I came across uh, a team uh, was uh, when uh, we deployed in Japan. And at that time, there was a very strong Danish uh, contingency uh, that made it possible for us uh, to be effective in our delivery of assistance to Japan. Uh, 
what I also remember was that when I was uh, sending the team at the airport, it, it was still at the time when the uh, nuclear accident in Fukushima was ongoing. The uh, uh, level of um, uncertainty of what may happen ne next was high. Uh, having people to brave to go uh, was not trivial. And yet the team was very energetic, very optimistic, and actually extremely well staffed because they had not only Danish Danes, but they also had a Japanese woman married to a Dane who proved to be invaluable in the conditions we operated uh, with great deal of disturbance uh, uh, caused by the accident to Japan. Uh, so in any emergency, and I learned today that, that international deployments uh, in uh, just short 10 years are over 100, in any emergency you deploy, not only you help people, but you make us very proud of our Europeans, of our capacity to be a force for good, we Europeans, to be a force for good around the world. So thank you very much for that. Uh, not only operationally, but also in terms of policy, Denmark is uh, very much in the lead. If we pause for a second and we look back at this year, the year before, it is so very clear that we live in a world where the frequency and intensity of natural disasters is on the increase quite dramatically. Just this last year, 2011, is going to write a number of troublesome records. The record for, for the most dramatic drought and famine in the Horn of Africa. We have not deployed civil protection there, we have deployed humanitarian aid, but we certainly have seen that nature is hitting very hard, that climate change is no more a problem of the future, it is here to stay. We had the most expensive emergency in Japan, costing over 240 billion euros. We had the most devastating floods in 60 years in the southeast uh, of Asia. Bangkok went underwater. We also had the most frequent emergencies in the United States that caused that more than a billion in damage. 12 in one year. And the year is not yet over. We still have a month, almost uh, a month to go. And when we look at all this, we recognize that the only way for us here in Europe and when we act around the world to be effective is by building a more integrated system of civil protection in Europe. And this is where Denmark has made a tremendous contribution and is on its way to make a second contribution of a uh, major significance for Europe and the world. The first contribution Denmark has made was to invent the module concept and as you have been telling me now, apply it in a flexible manner. Uh, so after the Lego that all kids loved, well, kids and adults love to play with, uh, we have another Lego in civil protection, another Lego concept in civil protection, and it has influenced uh, significantly the directions of our civil protection mechanism. Since 2001, the civil protection mechanism of Europe has proven to be highly effective on the basis of this foundation, the modules that allow us to flexibly and quickly respond to any type of disaster. Uh, do you know how, how many times uh, we have activated the civil protection mechanism in 2001 and how many last year? 2001? three times inside Europe only. Last year, 32 times with 28 massive deployments. You were part of it uh, in, in Pakistan. Um, 
<coughs> more than half of these deployments outside of Europe, but also four times increase of deployments inside of Europe, just in short 10 years. And the modules that are currently registered at European level, in other words, the operational deployment of this concept is very impressive, 129 modules and eight task teams. And of course, the Danish are the best. <laughs> um, so that building block concept, that le a Lego concept that has made the foundation of, of the European civil protection system is now going to be advanced with the legislation that again would be led by Denmark as part of the Danish uh, presidency. And at the heart of this legislation is to put in action a philosophy that is based on three uh, concepts, preparedness and prevention, respect for a bottom-up approach, respect for building up a system that is based on each and every one of our member states and their capabilities, and solidarity, deployment in a collective manner when any or any one of us is overwhelmed by a disaster. And what we propose in the legislation are five very operational uh, elements. First, to do risk assessment, to know what is it ahead of us to be able to think of the unthinkable that may be ahead of us collectively, to have scenarios uh, that allow us to be better prepared and, of course, train for these different scenarios. Two, to get registration on a voluntary basis of modules that each country is willing to contribute for deployment and then commit that these modules are available for use unless they are needed back home. Three, advance our capacity for logistics and transportation to deploy fast. Four, get the uh, capabilities of our system to be tested more frequently in a regional context in joint exercises. Five, have a training center, an European disaster response center, sorry, a coordination center, an European disaster response center based on the national experts coming together with a small core team based in Brussels. So this is what we are determined to have, to have a legislation that will make us operationally faster, that would give us predictability when we face deployment, and that would allow us collectively to be most cost effective because of course together, together we can serve our citizens and the citizens of the world uh, better. Uh, as the commissioner in charge, uh, I feel extremely privileged to be, uh, to be living in my job exactly at this time because I think we, we do live in a very unique time when uh, economic difficulties test our solidarity. And yet it is exactly in your action where the very best of Europe demonstrates itself because it is solidarity among ourselves and with others in the most difficult moment when a disaster hits, when Euro the European value, the, the, the European strength is best uh, demonstrated. I was half jokingly saying on the way here that if uh, the uh, financial uh, difficulties in Europe were delegated to disaster managers, to the firefighters, to the rescue teams, they would have been over by now because we live and breathe solidarity and that is how we actually uh, uh, out of help uh, to people. So uh, let me finish with the following. Yes, the legislation is very important and I'm determined that we will have it and it will help Europe to be stronger in the face of disaster. But even more important during the Danish presidency will be to respond to any crisis that may come. 
because we all will be remembered. Not by the crisis we catch, but for this one that we may miss. And of course, that legacy, the Danish presidency is not going to carry. Uh, so today I'm here to also discuss how we can uh, operationally align, uh, how we can be uh, more an in anticipation mode of what is coming, and of course to discuss the policy directions of the presidency. Um, if I have one word for all of you, it is a very simple word and it is thank you. Thank you.